Now, if you could go back uh, to that Lexi interview, yes, would you change any? Like, would you not do the interview? I wouldn't have done it because I, I went on there to promote an album, Unspoken, at that time, and we never talked about that album. That never came up in the interview, so I would have, you know, I would have, I wouldn't have. Of course, it did. You can't go back and change it, but if I had known this way, I would have went about it a different way. But that would have only made the process of me getting to where I'm at now take that much longer. Mm -hmm. It was it was one of the moments where it's like, nah, I didn't see this coming. But we can rip the Band-Aid off. Because mm -hmm. at that point, I was like, fuck it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if this is what you're going to do. This is this. I've never seen you ask this of anybody else. Did you know her personally before yeah. the interview? Uh -huh. Were you guys I got friends? married to one of her songs at my wedding when I was married. Uh, Love Enough. Wow. So did you feel kind of like ambushed or yes. did you, you did? Mm -hmm. How did that go over after the interview? We took selfies, you know, years <laughs> later. Oh, years later. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Were you hurt by it? Yeah. I, mean, I really liked her a lot. I loved her a lot. I just didn't, I thought of anything, because I remember my bishop was like, at the time, Bishop Norman Wagner called her called, right? and asked her not to air it. And she did anyway. Mm -hmm. So that made me feel like, oh, so even if, okay, so mm -hmm. my, okay, all right. Mm. What did that teach you just about the industry and people and experience of telling your truth? It has its pros and cons. You know, I'm thankful to her for putting me in, in a position where I just dealt with it. Mm -hmm. But as someone I really like, because the first time I ever heard her sing was on Fred Hammond's song, uh, Grace. And I'd never heard a voice like that. Mm -hmm. So. See, I don't know that much about Lexi Allen. She's a, she's a singer? Yeah, she's a singer. singer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, honestly, that interview is what kind of gave, you know, people found out about her because that interview. We made each other famous. Okay. I didn't know that, that was what was going to happen, mm -hmm. but that's what happened. Okay. Um. Did it become like this big viral sensation because of the content of you just yeah. talking about your sexuality? Yeah, yeah. That's what got me blacklisted. That's why I had to start all over with a whole new brand mm -hmm. because I couldn't make any. And you money. knew immediately that you were blacklisted after that. It was about a month after. You couldn't book anything. No, the ones that I had booked were all canceled. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the way I was living and just as a man providing for myself, mm -hmm. being used to certain amenities as a recording artist. Yeah, of course, like it's like football players, like, no, we don't get salaries, we get windfall chunk money. Mm -hmm. So when you're used to certain, a certain overhead, and yeah, income, like you're, you you're were expecting like, a certain thing. Yeah, like you said, you did shows where you would get 35000 mm -hmm. you had staff of twenty, mm -hmm. and then boom, mm -hmm. you're in, you, you have a, a, a janitor's closet mm -hmm. for a, a, a toilet stall. Wow. With someone taking a shit next to me while I'm changing. Oh, mm. it got real. Mm. I have been in the fucking hog pen. Mm. While they're talking, trying to rebuild myself in that stall, it was just like, I couldn't call my dad. He was dead. I couldn't call my mom. Dead. I couldn't call my grandparents. Dead. Mm. Both sets. Mm. It was just like the church turned it back. Friends, artists that I did beats for, produced, gave money to, paid bills, bought cars for, all turned their backs. All just of from them. this one. And and what what did they have an explanation or they just turned their backs? They didn't want people to think they condoned someone who was being real about their sexuality. You know? The fluidity of it. Mm -hmm. As if it didn't exist in the church to begin with. And so it became a thing of like, um, I felt like these people knew who I was as a person. Yeah. And if you know me that well, you already kind of knowing like, I'm not like one of these kids is doing his own thing. Right. Don't act like you didn't already. So really, know. it's not that you were, it was that you were honest about yes. it. Yes. It wasn't like, come on. Yeah. If you grew up with me, yeah. anybody that knows like, this is some, nothing new. Mm -hmm. I've always dressed the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. I've always been, I have boyfriends and girlfriends. So mm -hmm. just, they've always known that. Yeah. So, but. When you're hot, you can't just limit yourself to one sex. Mm 
<laughs> or one orientation. It. It's, it's beyond a label. Well, yeah, you said it's about energy for you. It really is. You know, you know, that's how I met my wife. You know, I wasn't expecting to fall in love with her like that, but. You know, whatever it was about her at the time, it, it got me. Mm -hmm. and, and I gave into it, and we were married almost five years. Didn't nice. think about nobody else. Nice. That was, she was more than enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I didn't see that coming, mm -hmm. but it happened. Yeah. And I, what am I supposed to do? Now tell the, the, the LGBT community, oh, well, I got to explain myself to you. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's the interesting thing about the LGBT community, once all of this happened, and even me becoming more of beast slayed in, in authenticity, Mm -hmm. That's who I get the most homophobia from. It's so ironic. Yeah, they're very, they can be, not in general, I don't want to blanket it, but yeah, most of the the, the shade is from that community. The black gay community is kind of like homophobic. Yeah. Even though... <laughs> it's, because it's not, you know, if it's, if it's presented the way that people want it to be, presented or they're told mm -hmm. it's supposed to be presented mm -hmm. which is either super butch trade or super rupaul drag race it's like you notice they don't mind if it's if it's made like in a satirical way yeah or if it's presented in a you know more masculine way even mm -hmm. if it's a joke or if mm -hmm. it's uh, you're pretending yeah as long as you're giving the perception and when they see someone who is willing to define binary yeah and and be something that cannot be defined that's they're threatened by that because there's part and part of the threat is I wish I could do that. Right. I want to be that free. Mm -hmm. But according to what all the guys say that they want, I got to put this role on. Even though in the bedroom, those Timberlands go right up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> is that not accurate? I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that. That was funny though. <laughs> Somebody rockin' like a novel. <laughs> Studio Kill Show.